iron workers. They're some of the strongest, bravest, toughest guys on the planet. Okay, coming down. They're the men who build the world we live in. Now we're going behind the construction fence to witness the biggest. There's one for your end. Most ambitious. It's a monumental project. There's none like it. And most challenging engineering projects in the world today. As these iron workers battle time. We have a very, very small window. Nature. The ice come down the river in chunks. And danger. If anything goes wrong, someone's dead or never gonna iron work again in their lives to build our future. Edmonton, Alberta, gateway to the north, home to some of Canada's most extreme weather and the local 720 iron workers. Put her down here, a little bit more swing. Today, they're raising a new bridge in the middle of the city. It's a challenging project that requires an international team of engineers and over $150 million of investment. This is my tie back come along to stop this thing from flying away on us. This bridge that we're doing right now is uh, replacing a 100-year-old bridge. This is a state-of-the-art design bridge that we're putting in. There's none like it. It's required a whole bunch of welding, a whole bunch of connecting and bolting. It costs thousands of dollars a day to keep the project moving. And with a brutal Canadian winter fast approaching, every day is a race against time. Everybody's feeling the pressure to get this bridge done before adverse weather conditions set in. We got work to do, we got to get her done. But it's the sheer scale of the project that will push these iron workers to their limits. We're going to need measurements for everyone. The center span section that we're going to move was built on land in the last eight months. We have struggled trying to get this up on time. There's been some construction challenges. Floating a 1,000-ton bridge up a river in the middle of an unpredictable Canadian winter takes detailed planning and absolute precision. We're going to slide it out on two barges, and they'll pull that up river. Then they'll get positioned over top of the seats, and they'll pull that up. We're just putting some bracing. That's bearing the weight of that section of arch. We have to lock it into place just so nothing moves. Like, if you're out an eighth of an inch down here, you'd be out three inches up top, and then we're up to the creek without paddle, right? With zero room for error, the iron workers prepare for one of the biggest jobs they've ever faced. A project of this magnitude requires a large crew of highly skilled and specialized workers. There's some serious characters here. You meet a lot of really interesting people. And it takes a unique type of person to succeed in this world. I really like the excitement of the trade building unbelievable stuff with biggest machinery in the world. It takes a little bit of mental toughness to sit and grind for about four or five hours in a row, right? I think the best part is being able to stand back, take a look at, feel good about what you've done. When I pass, my daughter and my daughter's children will be able to say, my daddy built that. Although pride goes a long way, it also takes a sense of humor to survive this job. Oh, that's very nice. You have aggressive. a very gentle touch, very soft touch drill. You're joking around with the guys and try not to take anything too seriously. You want to <laughs> love her with an easy touch. A little Conway Twitty for you? But when it's time to work, it's time to work. Take us to the moon! Up, up, and away! Before the bridge can be moved upstream, the iron workers must raise a crucial support structure known as the red iron. We were putting up the red iron, which was red painted, false work. It's an important part of the bridge because that's what's going to hoist the whole bridge itself into place. All it does is holds the pieces up in place until the whole thing's assembled. Coming up on the load. Coming up. Despite strict labor laws designed to keep workers safe, 
Ironworking remains one of the world's most dangerous jobs. It's been a while since I've been up in the air, up high, I guess. I'm always nervous on the steel. I had to go up and connect the brace. It was very slippery, and my legs aren't as good as they used to be. I've had plenty of close calls. I've been almost squished by a beam a few times. I took a fall, and I got hurt, and I broke my leg, and I had to phone my wife, and she reacting, crying, freaking out on the phone, and screws and pins in my ankle now. And I was out for six months. I just got back up and kept on going. I got a family to feed. I had to work my way across to the other end and connect that end. Fucking icy. Why do I do this to myself? You gotta live with fear. Just look it in the eye and walk right at it. Fifty-six meters above Edmonton's North Saskatchewan River, Bo's job is to connect steel braces that will support the new bridge span. But to do so, he must negotiate the icy steel beams. Woo! Yeah, I'm just getting my legs back, man. It's been a long time. There's nothing better feeling when you get up high in the air and you're walking a piece of iron and putting it up. It's a thrill. I love my job today, just like every day. <laughs> the new $150 million Walterdale Bridge must be hauled up river on two barges before being lifted into place. Before that can happen, the barges have to be tested without the weight of the arch to ensure they can move freely upstream. Imagine doing this with a 1,000 ton bridge on top of it. In the middle of the river, you get stuck. Ah. My actual job here is to supervise all the big movements. It puts me a little bit on the pressure. Pull, 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 pull. Andreas is responsible for maneuvering the barges in very shallow water. We've got something here that makes you turn like shit, like hell. Experts have been brought in to expedite the test run. I got Dutch people running around. I got Spanish people. Si yo voy con la pontona de flotante, me voy atrás. Yo tengo un punto pico aquí. Es que no tiene otra explicación. Estamos tocando. Don't know exactly what's going on underneath. You get stuck here. Antonio, Antonio. Oye, pueden venir los buzos aquí a mirar a ver si estamos tocando porque esto es un poco raro ya. We got something underneath the barge. Can check it first before we start moving. All right, yeah, we'll hop in and have a check. I got at least 10 meters more to go. Like it's super close, right? Kind of like around it, come from the edge of the pile right here. Seven meters and a half of stone stuck underneath. We're already working on this for two weeks. Before Andreas can move ahead with the test, a dredger is brought in to clear the rocks and deepen the riverbed. While the dredger clears a path, Greg and Bo hang the red iron which will support the bridge span before it's locked into position. Looking good. A little bit more. Boomer but not down. before they take care of some unexpected business. We found this poor little bird all frozen to the ground, so we're going to send him up to our connector partners. He's already dead anyways. If you can't have a fun on a job, it's time to move on. Greg's a great old cat. You can pick at each other all day long. Part of the game, I guess. You always got to have fun. If you're a miserable old <laughs> do something else. <laughs> What the f <laughs> Hey, that's a first, a piece of iron with a dead pigeon on it. <laughs> you f <laughs> It's been two hours since Andreas ordered an emergency dredging of the river. Okay, 
Every time we start moving, we get stuck for some reason. The water level is too low, wreaking further havoc on the operation. Hay que tomar un puto decisión a ver qué hago. Si no me subo al agua, ¿qué hago? With daylight slipping away, the crew will have to put the move on hold and try again in the morning. Every day we take a look at the river. It's a little bit colder. The ice started to come down the river in chunks. We have a very, very small window trying to get this center span out there. I don't think a lot of people realize how short that window is going to be. After dredging rocks overnight, the barges are able to move upstream. We've moved a couple of times from the north to the south side. That looks like that everything goes OK now. It's not stuck. It's now safe to release the 1,000-ton arch onto the barges. It's the point of no return. It is positioned on greased-up skid shoes and slid out over the river. All valves open. It's a very simple plan. They grease the track up and slide it out on two barges. Once it's out on those barges, the barges will be tied up with winches, sail it around over there, and set it down. Okay, adelante. Well, it looks like they're stuck. Not very good news at all. That's the bottom of the barge. The bottom of the river. They always wanted at least a half a meter of water underneath them. There's not enough water in the river right now, and that has been a concern this year because it's been very dry. I should be floating until then. There should be nothing happening. They've got the dredger there just scooping stuff out in front of them as they start pulling her in. If there isn't enough clearance underneath the barge when it's carrying the bridge span, the additional weight may get it stuck for good. My job's not on the line, but I'm sure theirs is. They lose control. I have to get the control back. They're running around. No, you can see the tension. I'm still attached to the barge. There we are. There no. We'll be more back there, not there. You don't have to lie to the other story, that I'm still attached to the barge. What are you lying? I didn't tell you. De verdad, tío, que parece que todo el mundo me interpreta mal, joder. Si estoy flotando, se tiene que llevar. Pues no se llevaba antes, porque estoy atascado en un sitio. Si estoy atascado, joder, si estoy atascado, me da igual que estoy aquí o ahí. Ah, llámame gilipollas. En Edmonton. A dredger works overtime, clearing the riverbeds so the arch of the new Walterdale Bridge can be floated into place. But a new problem arises. Temperatures drop substantially overnight. Everybody's anxious because the ice is heavier. Everybody's feeling the pressure to get this bridge done. I'm gonna try it, see what happens. The crew must position the second barge under the centerpiece with precision accuracy completing the transfer of the arch from land to river. The ice is starting to freeze up thicker and thicker. Coming in pretty quick. All the jobs always go to the limit. Very frustrating. She's a race against time. Going to take this all apart, get rid of this truss here. Bridge that we're doing right now is replacing a hundred year old bridge, and it's just not something that's slapped together like a Meccano set. Everybody's feeling the pressure to get this bridge done right from management, right down to the guys on the tools. Just hook the chain in that lug there. There you go. That's a cock for Dolly. You guys want to go have coffee now? Coffee break is a good way to separate yourself from the job. 
Chris, keep it down over there. You're saying too much. Gotta get her all in. We only got five minutes. On this job, with all the pressures to get things done, try to put the job out of your mind so it actually is a time of relaxation. It'll be interesting to see them pull that barge out and get her in and around. That ice is flowing, dude. When you got the current, you don't really notice, but when you get that ice in there, mm -hmm. holy macaroni, yeah. man. That's the other thing is the cable's hanging in the river and collecting ice and building up. Puts a lot of extra weight on it, eh? Let's just hope the weld holds, eh? The pressures of this job, it's a lot of things that are unexpected. The guy's still got a mouthful of coffee here yet. We weren't even in there five minutes, and they say, oh, we're, we're ready for you now. Well, I guess we got to go make our money, boys. It's uh, shove something down your throat and get back out there. Going on to the barge here right away. Getting all our gear down to the river. The bridge can't float on air. Have to mount it to the towers out there. It's a trade that requires some bulwark and some toughness. You have to be strong. Whatever it takes, it's work and we'll do her. Keep her down! People trying to sleep over here! That bridge is sitting entirely up on the barges right now. She's floating in the river. It's going to get shot right out into the midstream and winched up right into the place where it's supposed to go. Ice is the enemy of this kind of an operation. Try it. If the ice gets any worse, she sits here frozen for the winter. Waiting until the river thaws means a further delay of five months and severe financial penalties. Waiting for a decision as to whether we'll set sail today. A decision is being made by somebody very high up, I guess, who's either willing or not willing to take the risk with the ice flow as it is. Uh, scary. It's going to be hard to get it all done. It's 5 a.m. when the crew gets the OK to move the center span. With the river freezing up, time is critical. Big day, buddy. Big day. Anybody that is involved in the move on the barge got to uh, have a full survival suit. In case it hits an iceberg, it goes down like the Titanic. The ice is an unknown. Pressure will be on the barge itself, and everything's pushing hard against that. It's a lot of weight. The risk is that uh, you get too much weight with the ice, and your cables break. And this bridge ends up at Fort Saskatchewan instead of Edmonton. I think the worst thing that could happen is it becomes unstable, and uh, people begin to get hurt. You ready to go? It's a good day for sailing. The crew winch the barges forward. Now, it's a battle against nature. Looks like it's working. The ice is not banging against the band, so I don't think there's any problem. I'm getting stuck. With the barges moving upstream, Gibby and the crew must still finish a critical piece of ironwork. This skid shoe is getting uh, modified. It's going on the south shore where the bridge is. This has to go in before the arch can sit down. When those barges come out, this is what it's going to be sitting on. The bridge can't go in without this in there. I'm not worried about the skitchers. If that river goes down, then that's when I get really worried. Got to come to me about uh, eight inches. The barge is coming! The barge is coming! Just securing this here so she's in place. We're ready for the span. Just in time. Bring on the barge! Barge is on the way. These guys are coming in real close here right yeah. now. They're going to be right up tight. The ice is looking good, eh? It's not building up. All the forces are it's calculated. There's not much influence on the ice right now. Sun goes down in a couple hours here. I hope they find second gear. I think they're going about a meter an hour. Speed demons. Yeah, let's go, eh? <laughs> Next major challenge, I think, will be sitting the arch onto the skid shoes in a place where everybody's happy. For me, the most stressful part of all the move was that final position in between the two towers. Does it fit? She's awfully close. The boys are just trying to get her to come in nice and even. The engineers want the bridge to sit down to this place that's going to take the load. 
pretty soon we'll have touch time. Good to go. Bridge is in place. We got the OK to weld. Now we're going to go out and start taking the bolts out of the tower. The welders poured the weld to it and welded it all into place. It was an exhilarating moment. Now get the barge out of here. A lot of work yet to do now. Finally, the most difficult part of the job was pretty much done. OK, it's finished. We hit air. <laughs> start shouting and screaming. We are the guys that get her done. The yeah, ironworkers stand up to challenges and will continue to stand up as this bridge goes up. It'll be something for all the ironworkers to be proud of. That feels incredible, man. Unreal. You guys want to go have coffee now? <laughs> <laughs>